So I'm going to show how to use Fiji as part of a broader workflow with Visium Stitch to stitch together Visium capture areas. So the first step in the Visium Stitch workflow is to run rescale image day inputs. That will give you high res images that are on the same scale. I've gone ahead and already done that, and I have these three images downloaded. So you'll see that a lot of the Visium Stitch functions use um, a data frame called sample info. I've locally downloaded that as well to, to show you what this looks like for me. Importantly, there's a group here in a capture area. So right now I have one group, one unique group consisting of three capture areas. So these three capture areas will be stitched together into one sample. So I, I've opened up F Fiji here. And the first step is to go to file, new, track EM blank. And I'm gonna go to this directory where I have these three images. That'll open up a, a couple windows. So in this main window here, I'm gonna make this full screen. Now I'm gonna, gonna just import three images. So hopefully the person doing the wet bench work will give you something like this. That'll show you how to stitch together your capture areas. So in this case, I have the three capture areas sort of horizontally. Um, C is adjacent to D and D partially overlaps A in that order. So I'm gonna to try to import them um, arranged like that. Another thing that I'll have to do is to rotate the A cap, uh, capture area counterclockwise. It says clockwise here, but I know it to be counterclockwise. So I'm going to go back, import all three images. So right here, I right clicked on the canvas. I'm going to go to import, import image. So I'm going to go back to this arrangement. So C, D, and then A. So I'm going to just do this left to right here. You can drag this around. I see already that the canvas is not going to be big enough. I'm going to right click here, go to display, and then resize canvas. I'm going to make this about 7,000 by 4,000 pixels to make this bigger. Um, sometimes you have to zoom in and out. With In my case, I'm going to max. So I'm going to use command minus. Um, and this is what the canvas now looks like. So I have C, D, and then A. I'm going to import the other two images the same way. So now I'm going to try to line up C and C and D. So there's a little lighter region on these images that maps together, and they should be perfectly adjacent. I'm going to zoom in. Now I'm going to click each image and hit spacebar to make them more transparent so that it's easier to see them when they're next to each other. Um, I'm just going to move this capture area closer here. Um, already I see that there's an angle between them. We want I know these to be perfectly adjacent. So I'm going to right click on the left image. Um, I'm going to go to transform, transform affine. And I'm going to use this manual tool to rotate things to be adjacent. So once you're satisfied with that, you can hit enter. And now I'm going to drag this to try to line up this lighter region. Um, so this is about right. Um, the rotation is a little bit off. I'm going to let it go for now. Um, I'm going to zoom out. I'm satisfied with those two capture areas for now. Um, now this one on the right, I said I had to rotate counterclockwise. I'm going to do the same thing with transform affine. This time I'm going to right click again and hit specify transform since we know it to be 90 degrees exactly. Um, counterclockwise. With this coordinate system, negative means counterclockwise. So I'm going to do negative 90 and hit OK. Hit enter because I'm satisfied with it. We'll zoom in here and I'm going to hit spacebar to make this transparent. And I'm going to line up these purple features here. So you see this, this and this right here are supposed to line up. So I'm going to try to do that real quick. So I think this is about good. Once you're satisfied with your alignment, um, I'm going to just make these all not transparent again by hitting space. But essentially, you can select these images. I'm hitting Shift to select all three. Right click on them. and. Um, adjust images here, blend selected images. So I'm just gonna hit okay with the default settings. And we get something like this. 
Um, and now we have our combined image. Um, the next step is to resize the canvas to just fit only the images. Right click, display, auto resize canvas. Um, and once I zoom out, you can see that it's fit the images. Um, so the next step here is we need two different components. I'm gonna go to the other window. I'm gonna save the project. You save as, and importantly here, we need to use the group name um, when you're saving. So our group is called BR2719. I'm gonna save it in that same directory. That's totally fine. And in this window, so now we have the XML file. That's one component. The other component is the image, the combined image here. So I'm gonna right click over here. I'm gonna do export, make flat image. Uh, the key things I have to change here are we want this to be a RGB image. The background color in our case is nearly white. So I'm gonna use 255 for all channel values to get exactly white. Um, now I wanna export this to a PNG file. Um, and then I'm just gonna hit okay, that everything else is good and put it in that same directory. So I'm gonna go back to this directory that I have open, opened up. Um, I'm gonna see, it's, I see that it didn't name it with the, the group name. So I'm gonna name this image the same way, um, BR2719. Um, and those are the two, two components that Visium Stitch will need to build the spatial experiment object. So those, those two files, you're gonna to need to specify in your sample info sheet under the ImageJ XML path and ImageJ image path. Um, so I've, I've gone and done that. And so next next steps are running um, build SPE with Visium Stitch and some of the prepped, prepped ImageJ functions.